What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 6 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Karl Franz campaign. So as we saw last time, we defended Helmgarden against a massive assault by Heinrich Kemmler who decided that he could take the fort, uh, but ultimately very much failed to do so. It was a good thing that we did get a, a bunch of units in here as they did help out in the defense and I do imagine we'll still be holding uh, this fort for a while yet. And another reason why we will probably want to get Fort Bergbrus as well as, or Bergbre, I don't know, uh, as well as it's very possible that they try to move through wit. I don't really like the idea of having to have two defensive armies, but they don't have to be full stacks, so maybe. 670 per turn, for example, ain't all that bad. Anyway, more importantly perhaps than that, we were able to take Marienburg with Karl, and thus its lucrative port is now ours, and we will be obviously making this province into a cash cow at some point. Now, in terms of what we gotta do this turn, other than diplomacy, of course, in fact, maybe we don't start with diplomacy. Let's see if there's any buildings, there is not, or any move and there is also not. <laughs> All right then. Uh, maybe now it's time to start collecting the income as well. Let's see. The growth has been pretty okay, and from 250 down to 200, it's probably worth it to get the extra 800 per turn, as we will be wanting to build more recruits and all that sort of thing. Also, I do want to see if there is something useful in terms of the stances that we have. That helps out our territories. No, because I'm just comparing it with the Valea's will stance that I've been starting to use in my Belagar campaign to buff up the territory, but alas. Now, also, oh, I noticed a thing. A recruiter here is healing troops a lot faster than Carl is, most likely due to the fact that he gets the bonus 5 from the constant casualty replenishment. It's a little bit strange that encampment would heal your troops faster than your territory would. In fact, it makes absolutely no sense. But what we can do then is simply move him in and take Carl's troops, with the exception, I guess, of the mortar and... let's say you. And they'll heal faster outside. It's it's very strange that we have to do that, but <laughs> I mean, if we have to, we have to. And then we'll see about Fort Bergbrus next turn, I guess. I would have preferred to avoid, you know, breaking our army upon a fort, especially as it's gone up to tier two. Hmm. It is a question. Because Kazrak is here and he could move down at any point, though I doubt that he could take Altdorf, as in I, signific I significantly doubt that he can, but uh, nonetheless. Now, diplomacy. Diplomacy is the next thing we gotta do. First of all, you. You don't like us. What we'll probably want to do is join our your war against Musillon in order to at least be a little bit friendlier. And let's see, that helped barely at all. Yeah, I don't like that. Hmm. Hopefully that won't mean... Man, you should like the fact that we're fighting Kemmler as well. Come on, Lewin. Don't make us fight you. He really liked Marienburg, huh? Okay. And I do wonder what he has in his army. Well, it is a full stack. 2132 on the men at arms, just out of curiosity. We got 3045 on the swordsmen, so yeah, the state troops should and are better. They're just a lot more expensive. He also does have a lot of knights, though, which is a concern, at least until we get our Reichsfort up and running. Next up, that is not all the diplomacy that we possibly want to do here. Uh, we may want to establish trade with Talabekland because they are... Uh, uh, they're pretty strong with five territories. And let's see, Nordland is doing okay. And the Golden Order. And these ones we might be willing to pay prestige for. In addition to that, let's see here. The Ice Court is at minus 2.2 only for getting a military axis, and we do want to get friendly with them as fast as possible. So what we'll do there is we'll join a war against Clan Mulder, like so. Clan Mulder is too far away to threaten or annoy us, plus a lot of factions will probably like us fighting those guys, so we'll do that. Alrighty, and that'll make us friendlier with the Ice Court. You, my dwarfin friend, uh, we do want to get other types of agreements with you, especially military access, but I think it'll take a while. We could declare war on the Crooked Moon, which are also too far away to threaten us. Greetings, honorable ally. Nah, it won't be enough. Alright, well then, screw that, then. We'll leave that alone for now. 
Next up, let's establish some trade, shall we? Uh, some electoral machinations. I want to say let's go with Talibek land first. I'm curious if this decreases our relationship with them. So, minus 27, minus 3. And then we'll pop electoral machinations to Talibek land. And we'll go for established trade. And that gives us minus 57. Oh, okay, so we shouldn't do that. <laughs> Alrighty, we'll save it for uh, we'll save it for increasing fealty then. The trade is nice, but it's not actually giving us a lot of uh, a lot of money. Although it will increase our relationship further by being an additional treaty. Huh, a kind of a trade-off, isn't it? But also now that we used our prestige on that. Let me just see here one second. Now it costs, well, it's only 365 to establish trade with you, Balfi. Alright, fine. Do, do this with you as well. Yeah. And then the last one, I guess, was Nordland, I believe, which is 654. Okay, now we'll hold off on you then. Alright. Still growing to 91, so everybody's still pretty darn okay with that. Though we have to be careful of uh, doing that a little bit too much. Alrighty. Now, I believe we're ready to end the turn, unless I'm mistaken. Reichland is now generating cash. Not a lot of it, mind you, uh, but, uh, well, we'll need it. Uh, Axbite Pass will never generate money and is currently in the Council of Burgomeisters, which we will need until we can upgrade it to Tier 3 at least. So we'll keep it as it is, and the Wasteland should probably collect money. I mean, we could grow it, but it should be able to defend itself. We could switch it to growing later on. Maybe. I'll think about it. Uh, let's leave it for now. Unassigned skill points will ignore. Let's end the turn and let's move forward. Let's see if Kazrak does anything interesting. Will he attack our Nordland friends here? I think he's also fighting with the Black Pit tribe orcs, so he could potentially attack them. Or the AI does have a tendency to get into stalemates with itself. So the fact that there's a full stack belonging to Boris in Karoberg might mean that Kazrak will refuse to move. You want a peace treaty and you only give us 600 money. Are you kidding? That's not gonna happen. Really, minus 2.9 or 2.9 only? No. He doesn't even want a peace treaty, really. Which is fair enough, I guess. We were never gonna peace out with you anyway. Ooh, yes, Imperial Authority for free. I will certainly take that. Let's give this a quick read, though. In the Empire, political power is often connected to economic prosperity. There is perhaps no group or organization that has a greater effect on economic prosperity across state borders and then the Merchants Guild, the rumors being that many of the electors themselves are on their payroll. Using your gravitas, it may be possible for you to arrange favors for the patrons of the Merchants Guild, such, loosened, or such as loosened regulations or tax cuts, in addition to more personal furtherances. In return for their help in advancing your political standing, all at consideration considerable cost, of course. Imperial authority plus one, but lose a little bit of prestige. The merchants hold a lot of clandestine political power. Granting them favors will benefit you greatly. All right. And that puts our imperial authority up to two. Gotta keep it up here. I mean, it would be nice to get to 10, but I don't see it being super likely. But we'll give it a try. And we'll give it a try without confederating, at a, confederating anybody at first. Just try to max out everybody's fealty via prestige. Get our imperial authority up to 10 or 13 or whatever is needed and slowly start integrating imperial territories with ours. I'm sure we have things to do in the meantime. Now, I kind of don't like the fact that Lewin is sitting in Grungzint because it feels like he might declare war on us and attack Marienburg. Hmm. But we should still probably attack and take Fort Bergbus. Alrighty, now here's a question. Do we do that now, or do we start healing? We could hit it immediately. Of uh, well, either way, I think, Carl, you are going to get your troops back, if nothing else. Wait, you Hunts can go back into regular stance. You, I'm gonna get your troops back, like so. Minus two. I guess it's gonna have to be the pikes. Like so. Then, Carl, you are going to move to Bur Burgbrus. Men, we must I'd really prefer them not to upgrade it any further, or to build any uh, 
anything up here. Uh, Pyrrhic victory is a lie because the auto resolve, for whatever reason, doesn't recognize the forts as strong. So we'll just wait on that. Uh, Banner of Swiftness back to you, and the Scarecrow Banner back to you. Good. It really is a shame, though, that you can't build siege engines in forts. And oh, Artois doesn't like us very much either. Mm. Well, we're not going to bother taking Gisero, I'd rather hold the forts. The Recruiter, I would love for you to help out. Now, the question is, if you move here, can you move back to Marienburg? It looks like you can. All right, so we'll use you as a reinforcement, because I'm thinking we'll probably want him to move into Marienburg such that he can uh, potentially defend it if Lewin decides to attack. That said, if Lewin does decide to attack, the likelihood of us... Uh, Def, uh, of us keeping Marienburg relatively low. Too many forces here. And how would we even stop the Pegasus Knights? At least without uh, at least without Carl's army. So we'll do that in a second. Next up, Wolfram, I want you to send your newly recruited uh, crossbows over to Gregor here. Like so. And I guess you will probably work as a decent defender for our other territory, as in we'll keep you in Fort Burgress, right? Unless there's a better one. Let's see, control experience. Ah, it's plus five for instance. If it was per turn, that would be ideal for defending. And I just want to check out if there's anything useful here. I really wish that Burn the Undead was a little bit better. Like, plus two leadership? Who cares? It's not powerful enough of a uh, buff. Whoa, construction time reduction and income from buildings plus 10. Oh, huh. This guy might actually be worth keeping, as in forever. I don't really care about the construction time as much, but the income from buildings plus 10 will probably be more than the 200 uh, money that he costs fairly quickly, especially as Altdorf will be generating a ton of money. It's not worth it right now, but it might be eventually, which makes me tempted to recruit him. Hmm. You know what? Wait. One second. Carl, when you level up, do you get something that increases our heroes' uh, recruit ranks, or lords' recruit ranks? This is Empire Captains. Recruit rank for general units, all characters, yada yada yada, that does not really help. I swear I saw something that further increases our lord recruit ranks, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, it's right here. Lord Recruit Rank plus two all provinces at level 12, though. Do we really want to wait that many levels? Because this guy might disappear by then. And we could very well get use out of him right now. Nah, you know what? I'm going to summon him right now. Screw it. Two levels isn't a big enough deal. Ew. Noble. So that reduces our upkeep by 200. What does the Emperor bid? And you can buff this territory. Now... You're not going to be a recruiter, rather, well, I guess you can also be a recruiter if you wanted to. I was thinking of making you a builder, but we don't actually have a builder trait like the dwarfs do, unfortunately. Huh. Oh, wait. Let's just take a quick look at Mr. Recruiter here again. You have strategist, well, yeah, the reason that you can move very far as strategist, which uh, does help for you. For you for being a recruiter. It's appropriate. What? Maybe we'll hold on to this guy's points for now. Upkeep for cab, leadership. Yeah, there's nothing constructy in here. All right, we'll leave it him as a we'll leave him as he is for now. I just like the idea of having him uh, boost stuff. Plus, I suppose if Kazrak decides to attack here at uh, at Altorf, we'll have another lord in there. Now you can no longer get new troops, but you can move out here via march stance and hopefully defend Fort Burgbrus once we have it or Burgbre. Uh, you do you need any more troops? I mean, a couple more wouldn't be a miss. I think. We probably want to replace these archers so that they're crossbows, though, in this particular territory. I mean, frankly, everywhere, but uh, especially on top of the walls. The disparity in terms of stats is huge. Yeah. Protector of the weak. 
And we'll probably have the recruiter recruit some, well, recruits for Helmgard. <laughs> and for Fort Bergbrae. Anyway, I believe that's it. Unless there's diplomacy to do, it's time to hit the fort. And there doesn't appear to be any useful diplomacy. I'd really like to get friendlier with Talzin, though. Especially since they can jump over our forts, which I really don't like. Uh, join your war against Paravon. No, no dice. To war! We wouldn't be able to do that anyway, because I think we have a non-aggression pact with them, because I was expecting them to be dead. And they are not. You need to die, please. Die quicker. <laughs> Hopefully Orion just kills them next turn, and then we won't have to worry about that. Uh, anyway, Carl, it's time to go. Uh, minus one thing. You are going to get this Potion of Toughness. And Iron Curse Icon. Carl, what are you currently using? Potion of Healing. Yeah, okay, that's better. And you'll hold on to Dragon Tooth. Shield of Tala. So I guess we give these two to you. For now. Oh, minus the Potion of Toughness. We probably don't actually need the Potion of Toughness either, but, you know. We'll trade it to a lord that is actually a lord with an army later on. Now it's time to hit another fort, take close victory, a little bit of reinforcements. We've taken a fort before, so as long as we're careful, we should be able to take with this one. Here we go. Alright, well, Carl may be calling two arms, but uh, while well, they're not going to have to be two arms for a while yet, as we will begin this battle with our mortar bombarding the enemy settlement. Once again, this certainly makes me wish that we had a few more artillery pieces, hellstorms, or otherwise even a few more mortars to add to the mix. They're certainly going to be more effective in general than the... Uh, then the archers are and probably more effective than crossbows in a ranged exchange as well. Especially as the AI doesn't do the dodge dance when being fired upon. However, all that aside, I just gotta mention once again, I absolutely love how much more difficult sieges are in SFO. It makes them, it makes them actually worth considering. Like, it, you have to work for your win. Your army is threatened, and it absolutely should be. When you're assaulting a massive fortress that's designed to keep out your army that has all the advantages, and defenders do tend to have the advantage, it shouldn't be tr a trivial thing in the this game to just be able to just completely run over the defenders. That's just my opinion, of course, but uh, I'm re I really love the way that the sieges are done here. Anyway, we're going to begin the battle by bombarding the enemy towers. I may like the fact that the sieges are more difficult, but I'm certainly not going to rush all of our forces into the towers again, like we did in uh, Fort Helmgard, or in uh, Helmgard, rather. Fort Bergbrae will fall more systematically. Now, this tower is almost done, and I am curious to see whether we will have have enough uh, ammunition remaining to take out all the towers. We did have enough when we took Marienburg, however, I think we only killed two or three towers by the mortar in Marienburg, whereas here it's going to be four. So there's a difference there. Oh look, and there's the, uh, there's the Twin Tail Comet on the, uh, on the tower there. Which is kind of important. Alrighty, looks like you're just about down, and there we go. Unlike the Orky Towers, these ones collapse rather than straight up disappearing. And let's see, we got uh, about a third of the HP off of this uh, Swordsman unit up here, which is pretty darn decent as well. Free damage on that unit. Still a ton of enemies milling around in there that we'll have to deal with, um, but for now the bombardment will continue. And that said, I'm just going to speed this up a little bit. It's going to uh, take a while, and frankly, it's not very interesting. I like to see one tower of every type collapse first, as in see a Bretonian tower collapse, see a, I don't know, Skaven tower collapse, etc, etc, just once, but then afterwards we could just speed up the bombardment. Let's take a look at this map. I guess all the forts pretty much have the same map, don't they? I actually haven't taken an exact look at whether all of this is exactly the same. Would every single fort have an observatory? Probably a Celestial Wizard sitting in there, but not helping in the defense. Could be looking down from there and dropping comments of Cassandora on the, uh, uh, on the invaders. I do still feel like there's a lot of areas in these fort maps that uh, could still be used by the defenders. 
would be nice to be able to set up like a mortar all the way up here or several mortars all the way up here and then hold the ground while firing down etc no, of course they'd be vulnerable to enemy uh, flyers. Anyway, it looks like three out of the four towers have been destroyed. The fourth one about to fall, if we have enough ammunition. And I'm not so sure about that, because it looks like we got only a few shots left on our uh, on our mortar here. It's going to be close, though. Let's see. And no, it looks like we do manage just barely to take out all four towers. I love you, Mortar. You did a great job. Now the rest of our forces can move in, and we're once again going to be storming the walls of another fort. Probably the last fort for a while, so we're going to have to uh, better enjoy this particular battle, as we won't be seeing its like again. At least not for a long time, I expect. Anyway, Carl is going to move in with his Reichsguard as well as the Celestial Wizard to attack at the gate directly. All the Cav, basically, to break through. That, however, is going to take quite a bit of time, so the rest of our forces, as I said, will be storming the walls. We'll be storming said walls from various directions as well, in various uh, different means. So on this side, where the enemy has basically no troops concentrated, we're going to send our Free Company Militia, as well as our hand gunners, all our gun units. So that the hand gunners can set up up here and the free companies can protect them and then move on in and start attacking the enemy ranged units inside the settlement. This is where we're most likely to lose most if not all of our troops that go up the walls. So we're sending our two units of swords that are... Uh, uh, that are going to be reinforced by the two units of pikes. So the units that we're more likely to uh, uh, to lose, but also less likely to need to survive. We really don't care about damage to those pikes, after all. We're also going to get some help from our uh, from our huntsman general here. He's going to get to work on these units and lead his archers to dish out some damage over the walls as well. While the halberdiers, the great swords, and the other swordsmen move in towards Carl's gate and move in once the gate is broken. Without the towers helping out the enemy, we're not going to take nearly as much damage as we otherwise would. Looks like mortar shots coming down on our units as they try to get those walls uh, climbed and laddered. The enemy crossbows are arcing over the wall perfectly fine and just as well as our archers are, though we have the numbers here. One unit of crossbow versus three, I think, units of archers firing on it at the same time. Plus the lord as well. And yeah, for those uh, for those wondering whether the crossbows have a, have an inability to arc over walls, we can clearly see that they can arc over them just fine. So once again, I really see no need to build archers when you can build crossbows, which is very very quick. Alrighty, well it looks like those crossbows are done for. And how are those ladders looking? And how much damage do we take to get there? About half HP lost on one of the uh, swordsmen unit, and maybe a quarter or a third on the other, bound to take even more damage from the enemy mortar fire, and it's going to be a long time before we can knock that mortar out as well. Our archers also moving up to try to get shots on the enemy crossbows. We don't want them shooting said archers or the units that are moving up on top of the walls. But frankly, if the enemy mortar kills archers, I'd really rather prefer it. We're going to replace them in Carl's army with swords anyway. We're not swords, with crossbows anyway. So if they all die, it's probably for the best. I mean, it's better if the, none of them die, but I mean, if anybody dies, it's better that it's the archers. Anyway, our pikes are up here poking away at the enemy's swords, and the swords are doing the same, though they are much more the worse for wear, as the pikes didn't get hit by the mortars like the rest did. And this is going to take a while. I don't envy the units going up on top of these walls. I do believe the enemy lord is running around back here as well. Um, but if they're going to send their lord in to reinforce, we're going to do the same. Or at least with our second lord. A recruiter who has no name is just going to go up here and he's going to help out a little bit. He does also have his abilities, his arrow of Akshi and his oil flask. Also, why is this even called arrow of Akshi? Is it actually... Did, did he get a fire wizard to... Uh, uh, to enchant the arrow or something? Akshi is the wind of fire, but this guy's not a caster, so he probably wouldn't be able to... Maybe he can cast a cantrip or something basic. I'm not sure. Well, either way. Up he goes on top of the wall now. And he's going to f chuck that oil flask at the enemy. Uh, like so, and then follow that up with an arrow. We haven't seen a lot of these, so here it comes, and right into the oil flask after causing weakness to fire. 
and landing right in the middle of the enemy formation. Oh, let's see about that. Not too bad, quite the explosion by the looks of it. Very nice, a few more of those. Of course, they are on a uh, cooldown, but a few more of those should certainly help. He's got 45 kills and nearly 10k damage to his name already. Not so bad. Certainly seeing some value in the Huntsman General as uh, reinforcements, though I still do think that the Arch Lecters, with their Grand Soul Fire and their various buffs, are probably the better Lord. In fact, there's no probably about it. Uh, anyway, these walls are looking pretty good. Carl has finally managed to break through the gate with his great swords in Reichsgard and Co. And it looks like the Free Company militia are embroiled in a fight against the enemy pikes. And but two versus one, we should have the advantage here. Plus, the other Free Company militia are free to move downward. They're going to tie up the enemy handgunners, while our own handgunners that have taken the walls are going to fire down. And of course, when the enemy is dead, we will then be able to move into the city and start hitting the enemy in the back. Certainly taking some effort, but it's going fairly decently. We also have another unit of swords who've climbed the wall over on this side in front of the Free Company and are tying up some crossbows. The Reichsguard are moving through the gates, and as soon as the Great Swords and the Halberdiers are in here as well, the Reichsguard are moving past all these units and going directly for that damn mortar, who has used about half of its ammunition already, so... 140 kills. Probably way, way more than all the rest of the enemy units combined, so... And definitely have to be concerned. Fortunately, though, the only things left to defend outside the gate are the crossbows and the handgunners, which means uh, the greatswords and the halberdiers should be able to take care of them just fine. Now that the enemy's also blobbed up around the units of swords that are moving up here, our Urnon's Thunderbolts are gonna start coming down overcast. And they should be hitting the enemy pretty hard there. Oh, I love the lighting on all of the armor. Good job with the reflections. Alrighty, very nice. So let's see. Ooh, that was our first spell. So just out of curiosity, how much damage did we do? 107 kills and 21,000 damage, huh? Maybe I used another lightning spell and didn't uh, and didn't see it, because that seems like a lot of damage for a single spell. And then again, I mean, this guy isn't a caster and he got 10k damage in 45 with a single arrow. So, not so bad. Alright, well, our archers are still contributing to the fight. Here comes the next cask and arrow. I'm glad I looked here right now. And fire away, buddy. Alright, that one didn't hit in the center of the enemy formation, but it did clip the edges and uh, thus didn't hurt our own units there either. So... I'm mollified. Looks like our Reichsguard have managed to break through the enemy ranged units and are now tying up and or killing the enemy mortars and it looks like the battle is just about ours. Pretty much everywhere on the map the enemy ranged units are all tied up. They will all of course get destroyed without too much trouble against our our uh, melee troops and then it'll just be a matter of clearing out those walls. Good job to the Reichsguard. Huh. I wonder, can you capture an enemy artillery piece from a uh, uh, from an enemy if you take a settlement, or is it only an army directly? All right, some lightning coming down. I keep wanting to call her a non thunderbolt warp lightning. Too much time with a good claw. I'm kidding. There's no such thing as too much time with a good claw. Uh, let's see. These swordsmen are in pretty bad shape. We're gonna pop the harmonic convergence on them to buff them up a little bit, hoping that they can hold just that much longer until the rest of the enemy army dies. But otherwise, it's just a matter of time. Looks like Carl and the Great Swords have made their way through. This wall is nearly clear as well. The enemy lord is still fighting up here, but surrounded uh, by our pikes. And it's just this wall that remains. I guess we're going to keep hitting them with lightning until they're ready to rout. Lots of lightning today. I guess our wizard will have done quite a lot of damage by the end of this battle. Which is great. Comet of Cassandora up here would have been amazing as well. In fact, just out of curiosity, and before the battle ends, you have 203 kills and 31k damage. And not so bad. I still would have preferred a Fire Wizard, personally, for Piercing Bolts of Burning, but I guess we wouldn't have access to Piercing Bolts of Burning at the current time. And besides, we have gotten some decent use out of Harmonic Convergence, as the uh, state troops have needed it on occasion, and it does buff them fairly considerably. But then Fire would give us Flaming Sword of Ruin and uh, and Cascading Fire Cloak, so uh, we get buffs either way. Hmm. 
And the only reason I'm deliberating is as to which particular wizard we're going to want in Carl's final army. Maybe the lure of life, but uh, hmm, I don't know. I'll think about it. We have lots of options, fortunately, as the uh, as the empire, which is great. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll have to pick one, maybe two, for Carl. Anyway, a close victory for us. Of course, we would have taken a lot of damage climbing up those walls, but I think reasonably at the end of the day, it wasn't all that bad, and none of our units were destroyed. So. Alright, not bad. We certainly did take some uh, losses, 707, which is reasonably significant, but they were well uh, dispersed among our various troop types, which means that hopefully we'll be getting our heals uh, fairly decently up. That was a very, way, a very eloquent way to put it. Occupy. And the Hedge Wizard for you, Theon. Good job. And hey, we got the Death Jacks, Empire Archers, which is one Archer unit. Hey, and the Sigmar Sons, which are very strong and unbreakable. Uh, Gisero Gap secured. And we can upgrade you immediately, which I guess we probably should. Uh, but the Death Jacks probably want to be in here. And ooh, I guess hmm, we could do the same thing, can't we? And that we did outside Marienburg. So you are recruiting. Healing up at seven turns, and I assume that you're going to be healing up quite a bit faster. Actually, are you, though? Seven turns for at 57. This is seven turns. Oh. Actually, you're healing now faster in here, aren't you? Or at least you might be. Wait, how many troops are punished per turn? Twelve. How many troops are punished per turn? Seventeen. Yeah, so we're actually healing faster here. Which might mean we want to transfer these guys, but they're not actually part of this army, so we should heal this one. Uh, what I was saying was, we could still, or we very well should, get both the Death Jacks and the Sigmar Sons in Carl's army for now. Granted, we will be replacing the uh, uh, the rest of the archers with crossbows, but the Death Jacks in particular are quite good by virtue of being regiments of renown, and they have to hit... A lot, they hit a lot harder. They have snipe and vanguard deployment as well as discouraged application, and they're quite cheap. Yeah, it'll be worth our time. Uh, we could get, hmm, I guess we'll lose two of these and replace them. And replace the other three with crossbows. Something along those lines. And we also have to look forward in terms of replacing other units with both great swords and with Reichsguard, which we are going to be getting relatively soon. Alrighty, well, other than that, I believe we're going to end the turn. Since you're no longer needed here, Mr. Recruiter, you're going to head to Marienburg. And you know what we could do, just in case? Oh, we could put the Death Jacks and the Sigmar Sons in here. Yeah, it'll cost us an extra turn, but it might uh, dissuade the... Uh, and might dissuade the attack from Lewin. Watch him attack Fort Purpose next, or Berg Bray, rather. Uh, that wouldn't be great, but we'll see. Next up, we want to get you Evasion. I guess we'll be heading towards Comet of Cassandor, but at the very least, Magical Reserves to increase that uh, Winds of Magic Power Reserve, which is definitely needed and quite useful. All right, with that, I believe we're ready to end the turn. I'm assuming that Lewin also really didn't like that because we're still attacking his friends. Garrison Lord not moved? Well, the Garrison Lord is not supposed to move. That's what makes him a Garrison Lord. And Fort Bergbray, you can have... Hey, let's get your state troop levy. Just for one turn. If Carl's going to leave, he'll probably head towards Gorsell. Although we then can't leave Gorsell, most likely, because Kazrak is in the way. Hmm. Which might mean we'll need to make enough of a temporary army for you. Too bad you can't recruit... Uh, you can't recruit crossbows here. We'll have Wolfram do it for us. All right, well, we'll do that next turn. Another turn for now. All right, pro population surplus in Reichland. Great. I'm most curious to see whether Kazrak will move. And I guess whether Wuluan will declare war on us, but I'm not sure if we've already gone past Bretonia or not. And again? Really? Huh. Well, you know what? That was fun, but this uh, this is actually a much worse force then attacked us last time. I think we're free to just auto-resolve this one. I'm hoping that we don't suffer a lot of damage, though. 
Yeah, if uh, next time he attacks with a bigger force, we will... Uh, uh, we will properly defend it cinematically, but this one just doesn't seem like it's worth our time. Yeah, some- ooh, and we got a Razor Standard out of it. Very nice pickup, though, as well as some free money. Alright. And as long as he doesn't siege it, which it looks like he won't, we're fine. And yes, Lewin is gone now. He's out of Grung Zint, so he's not going to be declaring war on us, at least, in the next turn or so. Alrighty, and- oh, has Kazrak been defeated? A little bit unfortunate there, if he has, because I was hoping to get these territories back ourselves and trade them to our allies. Uh, but, yes. And the question is, did Kazrak's faction get destroyed? No, it didn't. Okay, so what might have happened is Kazrak's army actually ran away. Hmm. I'm tempted to do something here, which is to move towards Middenstag and try to trade it by, by colonization. Now, let's see how strong Kazrak is. Now, he still has an army somewhere, clearly. It might not be the same full stack, but there is an army. Alright, I'm gonna risk this. You're gonna go into ambush stance outside this settlement. And we're gonna move you slowly toward Middenstag. If he dies, he dies. I mean, it, it might happen. I'm willing to take the chance, though. Free fealty is free fealty, after all. Most likely Todd will uh, retake Middenheim next turn. Alright. I was actually... Uh, I was actually kind of looking forward to fighting the Beastmen again, but I'm sure that we'll fight them in the near future. Now, Carl. Several things. First of all, you're gonna move here, you're gonna go into encamp, and you're gonna stay in our territory, like so. Uh, like so, I guess. Cross the water, but stay in our territory. I think you're still in our territory. Kind of hard to tell. It looks like he's standing outside it, but then we're going to transfer your stuff to you. I like so, both the Death Jacks and the Sigmar Sons in replacement for you. And oh, you're a higher tier. Only by one, though. These ones will level up soon, I'm sure. We'll do you and you, I guess. I like so. Alrighty, and we can certainly rely on the Sigmar Sons. A recruiter, you are going to march stance back towards Fort Burgress in case it immediately gets attacked by something, though it doesn't look like the Barrow Legion are going to be powerful enough to attack it immediately. A you, Wolfram, are going to move into Aleheart, or outside Aleheart, close to the edge of Aleheart, and continue your recruitment. Alright. Going reasonably well, and we'll need to get some crossbows, and actually... Equipment check! Yeah, definitely some crossbows. You're still going to be our recruiter, so we're going to swap these two out once we're ready. Oh, you can actually move into the territory. My bad. Alright, you. Crossbows. Uh, away you go. Three of those, please. And we'll probably build some either spears or swords or something. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe we'll trade these crossbows to Carl first and the other stuff second. What's the likelihood that this gets taken? I don't know. There's nobody who's actually fighting. Oh, actually, we're fighting the orcs. They might come down. Well, fighting, quote unquote. In the sense that uh, we will fight them at some point. Uh, you can get Emperor's Finest, I think. Uh, there you go. And we'll obviously need to get a few more units in here that actually take advantage of that. Next up, Diplomacy. Once again, Carrick Norn Talzin, still not so friendly. Ostermark, same to you. And Ostermark should be dead soon, which will mean a loss of Imperial authority, as somebody has commented. Uh, Marienburg. Well, you're not going to give up one of your territories to us, unfortunately. I was hoping. Damn, he's recruiting fast. Yeah, Gor Gorsell also has great swords. They did actually might take some effort to take. Hmm. And they would like Carl to get that best of the Empire and all the good stuff up here, but it's gonna take a few more turns yet. He does have five points saved up though, but we're trying to get basically everything here. How close are we to Deathclaw? Level 16? Alright, well, we'll get there. Next up, we probably have something that we can build. Aleheart, I guess it's gonna have to be Fields again, just to... Oh... Wait. Summon the Elector Counts. We might actually replenish faster by moving here. Because all of the Fields are, incre are increasing casualty replenishment rate by 6%. Which would be more than the constant casual replenishment rate out of encamp, but only by one point. Ah, eh, yeah, it's not worth it, I guess. Not for one point. Uh, let's build the fields here. More growth. 
And then I guess you... Oh, wait. Another option. Now nah, we'll build a gunsmith in Altdorf. Never mind. Uh, let's build the fields. And then you can have the rally field upgraded. We'll upgrade you rally field first, but then we'll delete you afterwards. All right. That looks good to me. Anything else we need to do? Gregor, you're going to be here forever, buddy. So you can't move right now. Wolfram and Bernhardt, you're good as well. So let's skip that. And let's end the turn. Let's see if anything interesting happens. Please, Lewin, do not declare war on us. We should be friends. Although taking Kuran probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world either. It's a fairly nice province to have. And Grungzint has marble. And nothing else. Now, we also got to keep an eye out on caravans coming in to try to get trade agreements going with our... Uh, uh, with our Cathian future friends. Faction destroyed Paravon. Okay, that's actually great. Uh, Twin-tailed Comet. Wait, what? What do you mean Twin-tailed Comet is negative? That should be a positive for Empire. What are you talking about? Oh, the Grand Theogenes has decreed this to be a bad omen? Then why are we using it as the symbol of our faction game? Okay, the Twin-tailed Comet arcs across the sky, a portent of great events. The Grand Theogenes has decreed this to be an ill omen. The Comet is a warning that dire events are about to unfold, so your warriors are shaken and wary. That's very rude, Grand Theogenist. Why are you hurting our morale? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, let's see. This guy's got now half a stack in here, as well as the fairly decent amount of a stack in Gorsell itself. Hmm. You can come in as a reinforcement, though, and you do have Grand Soulfire to add to the mix, which ain't so bad. Now, I was originally... Let's get you... Uh, it's a hard ticket. Uh, I was originally gonna have you. Oh, you know what? Actually, let's get you. Now well, you're not gonna get too much value out of the Emperor's Finest right now. Hmm. Yeah, let's just get you hard to hit. But well, we can use you as a reinforcement, but in March stance. But that's okay. Uh, recruiter will swap out later then. I do wonder whether these guys are going to come for Recruiter, especially considering that this stack is uh, a lot more in danger right now. Let's get another couple of pikes in here then. Or maybe a couple of archers. And a pike. It's expensive, but... Hmm. I don't see a choice in the matter. A thousand gold for you. All right, fine then. One less pike. <laughs> it's necessary, clearly. Uh, get that farm up and ring. Aha, I was just talking about you guys. Uh, no dice on the trade agreement, but... Oh, you're fighting the northern provinces. No, 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 no. Wrong caravan. Are we... No, we still undiscovered those. Yeah. The wrong caravan, unfortunately. Okay, quick deal. Eric Norn... Nothing. We got nothing. Alright. We could peace out, but I no longer see a need to. Especially considering that uh, Kazrak is uh, dead or otherwise in trouble. Are you able to reach Middenstag in one round? No. Alright, back to Hamblish Dance. Uh, let's keep you here. And let's move towards it. It looks like Boris will indeed take Middenheim, but we should be able to reach Middenstag and... Hmm... I do wonder. We could trade it directly back to him for probably a decent amount of cash because he will have three out of four territories here. But on the other hand, fealty is worth so much that uh, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway. Anyway. I guess, Carl, you're going to move to Gorsell. Like so. No peace, just war. And we are going to encircle the place. To war. Man, they got a lot of range units, which is definitely going to be a concern. Then, Wolfram, you're going to move in March Stance, which means you're not going to be super helpful in the fight, but, you know, you can trade those crossbows to Carl. And the crossbows won't retain their March Stance, will they? Because it's the Lord Stance that dictates this. Uh, we can trade you two out, veterancy regardless, because the crossbows are better. And maybe we just keep one of these guys and then take out one of the swords, like one of the very badly hurt swords, as they're not going to be all that helpful. We can always swap again later. I'm almost tempted to take two swords. We have, let's see, one, two, three. We have a lot more melee than we did before. Hmm. 
You know what, maybe it's good enough like this. Uh, we'll take out the two swords, use them as reinforcements so you can have all three crossbows like so. Alrighty. That looks pretty good. Unfortunately, I don't think we have the time to fight this right now as it should be a pretty big battle and it'll probably take at least 10 minutes. I think we'll save that for the start of next episode. Lots of enemy halberdiers, which will be susceptible to our range fire. Should be a fun fight, though. Uh, oh, wow, even more halberdiers than Gorsell itself. We just gotta watch out for that mortar, so the Reichsguard have a lot of work to do. Anyway, next time we take Gorsell and probably move to Arnau to completely destroy the uh, uh, Marienburg faction, as well as get a contiguous border with our friends in Nordland there. We'll probably do a little bit of more of... Uh, uh, we'll probably do a little bit more of Imperial Machinations next time, as well as have Gregor get a stronger army, and same thing goes for Recruiter. These two forts are going to have to be held against the Undead and the Orcs probably for quite a while. So anyway, stay tuned for more Empire as we advance and try to... Uh, uh, and try to put the Empire in a good place. We will have to, once we're done here, also march towards Vlad as he is expanding, and we don't want him to destroy everything out there. Anyway, more Empire to come. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching. We'll probably also get the fealty up to 10 next turn.